Hello everyone and welcome back to the studio for this NA Play Day and the final game. It's been an excellent day so far, but we are not done yet. No, we're not quite done just yet. We're going to get into our first quarterfinal for North America. It is going to be Space Station Gaming versus Adventure Force. And Adventure Force have had a bit of a weird time of it. They started off actually quite strong in Challenger League, having beaten Akatsuki on Coastline, and then they had a draw. And then after that, it took a very... Yeah, that rocket did crash. Yeah, it, it was a tough game. It's completely fair to say, and a tough kind of season. And then, then there's so many arguments that get thrown around for the team as well, and the breakdown of, mm -hmm. you know, how much of it plays into... I guess the history. We'll come, jump into the map bands and see, obviously, how they want to structure this fight together, but... They really did a fair good showing on their first play day out here. Yeah, the classic Suzaku playing on Twitch and crouch walking into sight. It did work very, very well for them. We'll have a look at what the map bands are going to be and where Space Station and Adventure Force will want to take us to. The villa will actually be banned automatically by Adventure Force. And uh, I'm going to guess that Space Station will ban Bank here, but... They could also ban Coastline, because Adventure Force has actually had a decent time on Coastline. But I know throughout basically the entire qualifier, all Adventure Force did was keep going to bank for the CL qualifier. And they beat pretty much every C3 team on bank. So yeah, Space Agent are going to ban out Coastline was definitely a good map for Adventure Force. Yeah, so now obviously it comes down to the maps you want to play in. What we've seen a lot was, well, from SSG, they didn't have a great time on border. So it could be a map that they could also try and, you know, angle their way towards. They went 7-6 against uh, Atheris in the first play day, and otherwise they pretty consistently ban it out. Yeah, um, Adventure Force could definitely do that. I think Bank is definitely a big favorite for Adventure Force here. And also, um, just a quick note, Euphoria will not be playing. Zess will be subbing in instead. Although, Suzaku said that Cryo was subbing in, but I used to think that Cryo was on the main lineup, so I'm not really sure what to think anymore, but regardless, it will be Bank. So, Adventure yeah. Force will take us there. I don't think Space Station will want to take us to Border. I think Space Station have a pretty good map pool, though, so other than Border, they could really take us to anywhere here. Well, that's the thing, and obviously, as I said, they didn't have a great showing on Border, but they did have an amazing showing on Clubhouse, 7-1. They went, and that's still an option too. That's still a possibility they can set themselves towards, and you know, and that is where we're going to go. Clubhouse is the next one, and yeah, again, it was a very solid map for them. They always generally looked in control. They seemed quite well balanced, and I guess we'll see if Adventure Force can find a way around because that was one of the maps that they banned in the previous week. Oh, we'll see exactly what happens here. But deciders, you know, I feel like Space Station is in a really, really good spot here. Consulate will be banned out by them. Adventure Force could go to Border here. I feel like they might want to, but they actually had a really good showing on Cafe against Akatsuki earlier in the bracket, and that was their match to get into this quarterfinal. So I think, you know, uh, you know, if they went to Cafe, it would be fine for both teams, honestly. Uh, Border may be slightly in the advantage of Adventure Force, but yeah, it is actually going to be Border. So I'm not too surprised by that, but I think Adventure Force could have chosen either of those maps and they will be good. But I really do think that Adventure Force, do we need to bring in Bank? Because I just do not see them winning on clubbing at Space Station. I mean, that's the thing about it. So we've obviously got the breakdown of how the previous map went for Space Station the last time yep. they were on Border. And the thing about bank as you said it's a big map for adventure force they often ban out clubhouse they often find themselves in a situation there where they don't want to opt to go there they don't really want to bring themselves mm -hmm. to that but hey they've got to prove themselves in this first map as we jump into bank <laughs> so we're going to be moving into bank see we adventure force versus Spain station gaming be our first quarter final but unfortunately it's gonna be our final series of the day let's get into it see exactly how it's gonna go down ssg are gonna kick things off with a hub barna ban i think that's a pretty pretty common ban here on bank we do see quite a lot of it the Venture force uh gonna be off with their band uh i'm not too sure what to think of here eco the head coach for disrupt was talking to me about Adventure Force and like kind of VOD reviewing them. And he said that uh, you can't really prep for Adventure Force. So he didn't really know what to think of that. So we are going to be moving through. It's going to be a Jackal ban. And I think honestly, the thing that the fact that you can't really prep for Adventure Force, they do like a lot of different stuff all across the board, means that 
I think that actually might act against Space Station all because Space Station have quite a large support staff. They have Lycan as the coach, they have Data as analyst, and they have Nova as their secondary coach. So they have quite a large support, and I feel like that makes them a very heavy prep team. And if they go into a matchup where, okay, mm, it's going to be a bit harder to prep for this one, that might play to their disadvantage. And, you know, we I think, honestly, the map pool, the, the map bands have actually gone to Adventure Falls. Well, they're having a quick team shower, so I guess we'll okay. see how, yeah. how that builds morale as we get mm. into the game. Uh, but Mozzie is going to be removed. And that is, I believe, the first Mozzie ban that we've seen potentially across the entire tournament. From what I remember, yes. Yeah, I think so. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say that with a little bit more confidence. I think that is the only ban that we've seen so far. I've got two days off to go through all the stats later on for the last couple of play days as we edge our way to the end. But hey, it's a time for it to show up, and this is a good map as well, and it's a good operator in the hands of Adventure Force. I love Zest's name. His name is literally losing to Zest, like as if it's that embarrassing. <laughs> I think Zest has like a 0 0.9 ranked KD, so... Wow. Yeah. Bringing up, the, bringing up the man's stats. Well, it's more like, I think that's why he has it as his name. Because, ah, it's, you okay. know, you shouldn't be losing to a guy with a KD like that. But Thinking Nade is going to kick things off with a sixth pick from Castle onto the mirror as we go downstairs for lockers and see Stevie's room. Quite weird to see a mirror let through the band, so... It's rare, isn't it? It's always rare to kind of see it, because it is... Especially in the hands of Adventure Force, we've already seen it. A very good operator, Mira. They had it a lot. They had it, I think, for every game between them and Akatsuki. Both teams were using it very creatively. They were using it very aggressively. The weapon set and the information that it can offer. Yeah, on a point like this, it's it's often default. It's standard. You know where it's going to be, and you know how they're going to be playing it. It's got the Nitro Cell to loop over, and it's got the doubling of information. But then you start to see how they're playing it on the top floor. You start to see how they re not rely on it, but kind of use it as a really nice, like, double-edged sword across points. And you know, I guess that's one of the things as to why it gets let through, and SSG are happy to lean into that. Well, so far, pretty standard from SSG, although I'm wondering what the mirror setup ended up actually being, because it kind of felt like for a while there they were actually going to put a mirror in the other site rather than in red. Because, like, with this wall that he's reinforced to the right, is he going to put a mirror here? He is. This is interesting. Because this is, like, I guess it makes sense if you know that the garage is clear and you're fine. It does give you a very nice sightline. But you have to make sure that Fult stays alive in garage and he has that all up. Because if you lose that garage control, that mirror is going to become very useless very, very quickly. Yeah, and it's the thing about those kind of angles and the way that they play together. And he's looking for a bit of the firefight at this point, and he's trying to find his way through, but Breezy isn't wasting any time and is instantly cracking open these hatches. Cade is on the table, but they've opted not to bring him because they're just assuming at this point he's going to maverick through those hatches anyway. May as well bring something a little bit more aggressive as utility on the bottom floor. I, I also just think there's no room in this lineup for... Yeah, Cade. exactly. That's yeah, exactly what I was about to say. Is this is a very well-structured lineup. You have the Jaeger, which you generally need. They're going to play Bosco up close and personal aggressively against these service stairs, but then you've got the smokes to fall back on. Can use one take, one for a safety rotate, and then two to deny plant. Rampy's going to double up down, still with two ADS, still with one ADS in pocket, uh, and has the ability to double this up down against Bosco and keep him a little bit safer. But in the meantime, Breezy is looking for bodies. Yeah, Breezy able to do that work early on. Cryogen's actually managed to push all the way down, but no, will get eliminated by Bosco. Great opening frag coming up from him. This will be Suzaku who tries to push down onto this main stairs. The edge jobs have gone down onto that blue area and this is going to be very hard for Adventure Force to actually gain that server control because Space Station have a pretty impenetrable defense there. Thinking Nate does pick up one kill of his own onto that main stairs. Suzaku is out of it and now it's already a 3v5. Smokes are going to go down and that should start to signal some sort of retreat here, but Zest is actually going to go down on the server hatch. Rampy takes him down, and all of a sudden, we're in a 2v5 right now. Breezy's not been able to do too much work here on the hatch so far. As throw could be joining it all out, but Breezy's actually going to go for a drop right now. The Canadian Pulse is going to go down for it, but instantly just get traded out. And now it's all down to throw to try and bring this in. He's managed to make his way down all the way down to the bottom of the main stairs, and does manage to find Thinking Aid and his way into sight as well. He's watching all the rotates as well. Default cam is going to go down. 
Throw is still alive, and honestly, this is clutchable right now. 20 seconds left to go on the clock. He's desperately running out of time. Does not have Diffuser, but Diffuser is indeed in the sight. He's regained control of this mirror window as well. He desperately has to find this kill onto the Maestro, but you know he's going to push all the way through. He's going to get picked up for free, and Space Station take round number one. A very solid defense coming up from them. Yeah, very, very well coordinated and very balanced. Obviously, it took a little bit of creative aggression there from the sides of Adventure Force to jump in, find a couple of bodies that they did, but it's a hard point and it's made harder when the team has locked it off. As we said, you know, the lineup that they bought, there wasn't a real floor in it. There wasn't a, there wasn't any room for space. It was really, really well balanced for exactly what they needed to do with it. CEO is obviously where you get a little bit more as a breathing room in terms of how you can attack it and how you can hold it. So I guess we'll start to see potentially more of a bit of a battle up here. With with Space Station, like um, I, de I definitely like that mirror strat. I haven't seen that one before. That was nice. I'm wondering if we're going to see some new kind of off-meta mirror strats here as well, because very rarely we get to see mirror at all let alone on bank. I'm going to guess they're just going to do the conference mirrors, but it really could be any anything, honestly. That was it. As this, I said, um, sorry, go on. No, that's fine. As I said before, they uh, what we've seen from NA in a mirror is very fun, very creative, especially on this map, and they were happy to roll into kind of utilizing her. So, yeah, it looks like they had to do the conference mirrors. Too surprising there at all. Wondering if Fultz is going to try and hold down onto the uh, the Kanto area that Canadian's reinforcing right now. I think Canadian's going to reinforce all of the banana windows here. There's a pretty standard reinforcements going across the board from the space station. Have a look at what the rest of the setup does entail to be. It, it, again, we, we see the Rook over a dock here, which I think is interesting. I guess it's kind of like impacts over barb you know impacts are good here you know impacts are going to be allowed to impact trick we've got two sets of impacts coming out here as well maybe three if Fultz is bringing impacts as well potentially no okay so he's bringing Bob. so we do have two sets of impacts of course uh ramp is going to be on that roam as the vigil and Fultz going to go for that spawn peak well, let's see how long he decides to... Oh, he stops then. No. Let's, go, let's see how long he decided to hold the angle as Breezy starts to make his way through and Zest is going for a bit of a split push with Suzaku, wasting no time. Clearing across underneath, sees the man reinforcing and doesn't do anything to react as Breezy, in the meantime, drops Thinking Nade. First body off in the favor of Adventure Force and they have the man advantage. Suzaku's going to try and slowly and sneakily make his way through at this point and... Again, he's got a little bit of a... You know, he's, he's playing this very stealthily. Oh, he's got one! He might get two, but no, it does get traded out. And yeah, beautiful play coming out from Suzaki that does take Rampy off the board, but does instantly get traded out. But this does put Space Station at a bit of a disadvantage now. He's now going to have to pull people back to the site right now. This is looking really good for Adventure Force. They do get everything open up. Oh, Bosco going to go for the C4 early on. And he's just going to find Cryogen out of it. Nice kill coming out from him. Canadian is going to go for the run out from Garage, but doesn't manage to find one just yet. Brings it into a 3v3, however. And things are looking a bit squiffy here for Space Station. Don't have too many people on site. Breezy's managed to make his way into stock and throw is looking for Canadian downstairs here. Should be able to find him on the rotate, and there we go. Down goes Canadian. That's, that's the C4 off, off the board. Hold on to Bosco and Fultz. They don't have too much utility left remaining on the board. Well, with a minute 20, Adventure Force have got to start trying to lock themselves in a position to lock down the angles and the gunfights that they've already kind of set themselves up for. Obviously got this wall open very quickly and they're already putting bullets towards where they know Bosco is. With the cross angles here and Mira finding the space she can move and breathe in, getting smaller and smaller by the second. Well, it's just playing more into the favor of Adventure Force. Fultz is trying to double down from a bit of range and offer some support to Bosco, who is going to just try and hold on and eat as much of this time as possible. But if they can find a way in to get a little bit of a, well, just a corner that they can get a hold on, it could start to go very well for Adventure Force. Bosco continually pinned down in this firefight and can't find space. So Fultz is going to go for a big rotate. Get the man that's on the windows, and this could be a monumental pick if he can find the body. He's got it. Fultz finds a headshot onto Zest, but Throw is going to trade out his teammates. Hold down to Fultz to try and bring this in. He sees the head and takes on Throw. It's all down to Breezy. Went for the plant, but just got off it a little bit, and Fultz still holding down onto Banana to see what he can do. Just about 20 seconds left to go on the clock. Breezy's chosen to go for the frag just now as Fultz is expecting this push right now. The 
Three fires goes down from Breezy. They don't find the kill just yet, and Fultz is going to take him down. Space Station take round number two, but that was a close one. Adventure Force actually almost locked that out. Yeah, that was very, very well played from Adventure Force, but again, very, very well played there from Fultz. Kind of read what was going down and maybe got the report from the mirror that was still using that information game and was just able to act upon it. Got the body on the window and realized, well, they're probably going to watch my rotate on the stairs. So caught that as well from the aggressive swing from the mirror. And you've got to give credit to Fultz for bringing in a very, very big three kills. Tellers is where we're going to opt to and SSG are going to try and keep the roller going as they move to, again, a looser and a slightly harder point. Yeah, this uh, the cell is yeah, it is it is a very very loose kind of point. It kind of depends on how you want to play this, I guess. I mean, you see teams sometimes wanting to play a little bit more vertically. Canadian going to be six being off the mirror and onto the Valkyrie instead. Um, I think with this kind of one of the better ways to hold it is to hold it very very uh very loose, as you said, but also like making that rotate through tellers and trying to hold staff open air. And the reason you do that is so you, if you lose that vertical control, it's not too bad. You still have a lot of room to move about. So we'll have a look at what Space Station want to do here. We do see some teams do try and hold this kind of vertically, but it looks like Space Station are doing what I was saying about how you kind of hold this from staff as well. So we have this lots of room to move about in here and you make sure it's easy enough for you to get back into sight as well as reinforcing hatches in staff. I'm oh, there is a bit of a vertical play here going on. Yeah, yeah, I was about to say, I'm curious whether they, what they're going to throw and how much of the alibi is going to be kind of reinforced in amongst here. How much time they're going to try and eat with it as well. And the amount of control they might be able to have just from slowing the roll of Adventure Force. Also curious to see if Suzaku can find his way through as he sings whatever Metal Gear theme he's got bunning through his head and sneaks his way into every single part of SSG's defense that he can find, finding bodies along the way. In the meantime, I'm sure Bosco is hoping to have a little bit more success on the Vigil this time round. Quick pace breaking on the east side as we see the bodies start to rappel to the top floor and make their way steadily across stock and Canadian is going to be the first person they run into. This is a very awkward spot for Canadian to be in. As soon as he gets droned, he needs to kind of leave this area. And yeah, he's going to do just that. He's going to get all the way through into Janitors instead. And of course, he has the hatch open, of course, if he wants to make a break for it there instead. Bosco getting ready to try and open up this barricade and go for his pre-fires. But oh, the impact went down. Did that actually get the thermite? Wow, that's incredible. I don't How does that work? I've oh, never seen that before. Yeah, well, there we go. Bosco is going to be holding it down. Up onto archives and see what he can do here. He is going to get droned out, however. He's going to take that down instantly. This is really good from Space Station. They've been able to die a lot of control, and Bosco is going to take one off the board. There goes Suzaku, but instantly just get traded out. And Breezy finds his way into the site with that. And he gets another one! What?! He gets all the way in. Canadian is unable to trade this so far. Rampy gets one throw. We'll trade it back onto Canadian. And this is looking very good for Adventure Force, but Fultz, the monster, is going to start to shut it down. He gets one, tries to find another. He does get it. That's a double kill for Fultz. And it's all into Breezy to try and make something happen. He's got an air jab next to him as well, making sure he can shut down these rotates. He's completely abandoned the site right now, and he just does not want to be anywhere near that diffuser right now. As Fultz is trying to find him from above, using his secondary shotgun pistol to open up a bit of that vertical play. Rampy's on the pro roll as well. He's going to come through the other side, but they know that Fultz is here to try and push him down. He's going to take him. No, Fultz wins it as another 3k for Fultz on the Maestro. And they're going to win the round. Well, they get the plant down. I like the... He looked like a little, a little bit worried there as the alibi he got flung across the room, but he gets the plant down. Gets it broken off, gets another 3k for the round, and finds himself three rounds up. Able to rotate back down to the original point and keep themselves, well, cruising, really. They're having a pretty comfortable time with this so far. Obviously, CEO did come down to a three versus two, and then an eventual one versus uh, two, but... SSG, you've got to give credit to them. They've definitely looked very, very strong, as you said, on a map that we know Adventure Force are good on. Yeah, this is not looking good for Adventure Force at all. They had they actually had a, a couple of rounds there where they were looking really good and breezy, able to make his kind of entry. He was doing really, really well with it. But we'll see a lockers and CCTV room yet again. This is not looking good for Adventure Force. They are getting handed to them right now. They need to start to pick it up. And as we said, I mean, they really need to take this map. They need this series to go to border if they want to bring this in. Because as I said, we saw SSG do really well on club earlier. 
they had a 7-1, and yeah, I think that they just need to... Eventuals needs to bring this in. Attackers so. need to locate this should be their map, though, but honestly, all Adventurefuls really need here is just a couple of wins on their attacks, and I think they can be golden with it. Well, it's always the thing about hitting a map that is arguably sided towards the attack or the defense. Sometimes those statistics can really eat away at a team, but sometimes you don't really see how much a team is shining until we see them on the opposite side. And I guess we'll have to see if SSG can keep themselves in a good position or if it's something that when they get onto their attacks, well, we kind of see the same as what we're seeing now. Good moments, good clutches and good trades, and it's all coming down to very bitter ends. Fultz is looking to get potentially a little bit aggressive or just gonna barbed wire and slow this down. I was kind of hoping for more Maestro swinging, if I'm honest, but hey, the man doesn't have to. If he's in a position where it's, he's chilling, he's watching, and kind of like the cut scene, and then at the end when everyone else is dead, he puts out the cigar and he finds his way through all the bodies left on the time of Adventure Force. Well, drones are gonna start to go out, and there we go. We'll see a lot of control early on for Adventure Force to try and see what they can do here. They have the Ash up on the board as well from throw this time, rather than Suzaku, and yeah. Hmm. Breezy's also, he's playing on the, the Maverick this time, which he was doing the first round they attacked there, so that's fine. What's most interesting here is we've seen Bosco move instead uh, onto the man in the suit. Well, he's going to use that man in the position where we've seen him play before, bringing the big shotgun and the little SMG-12 to allow himself some ability to just stop any immediacy against this server stairs. And look at all the SSG champs we see across all these guns now. And they're keeping themselves a watchful eye on the hatches above. And with a nitro cell in pocket, a Canadian on a pulse is a nightmarish thing to see for a lot of teams. Surveying. Yeah, definitely. That's definitely his go-to operator for sure. He'll try and pulse it out and see what he can do here. Almost getting the frag, but not quite yet. Still pulsing it out, and this Maverick is really making it very, very difficult for him to try and pick up a free B kill up here. Canadian still peeking out where he can. No matter, air jabs are going to go down as well as more ADS is stacking up into blue, making that sure that Bosco can still hold this down. He is interestingly not opted to use his C4 just yet to take out this Maverick, but he's retreated all the way back into red. Well, throw in the meantime is now taking up the mantle of Ash and is steadily trying to clear away across. This also again on the top floor. Trying to potentially find bodies or trying to go for a big shift in pattern and rotate as they double down against Dirt Tunnel. And you can see them trying to find a little bit more aggression against the bodies inside point. But with a minute on the clock and at least two C4s still in pocket, yeah, this is a bit of a nightmarish position then for now to be in Rampy. Suffers the effects of flashes, but nothing really closed down on it. And the first body to go down is Zest finding Bosco, but Cryo is on the floor as well. So they will be able to pick that up. And that is server stairs under the immense pressure as Rampy finds one, but gets traded out by Cryo. Is now back on his feet and thankfully so. Otherwise that could have been a much worse position. But again, still two nitro cells on the board and only 30 seconds to make it work. Yeah, you're definitely a right. And he also still has this mirror up as well, and even if he didn't have an Ultra Cell, he'd still be a big threat in this kind of position. He's gonna move all the way in. Throw doesn't manage to get the entry kill. Canadian takes down Suzaku, but Throw takes down Fultz, and oh, there goes Canadian as well with it. An Adventure Force will take round number four. They'll bring it in for themselves. This is looking absolutely beautiful for Adventure Force and that collapse, and their control of blue just going in their favor, taking out the ward in there as well much better coordinates from Adventure Force, and all they really need is just another round like that. If they could put another round like that on the board, they can't be happy, but they can be at least content. Okay, like it's a 4-2, you know, it's a 3-3. We can be happy with that kind of progress. And with a mirror on the board, I think this is very, very defender-sided right now. Well, Bosco has opted to return to the Mantle of Smoke, offer himself a little bit more control, and currently Valk's on the board instead of the Pulse that was there before, but we've seen Canadian sixth pick before, and, you know, it's always an option still to bring himself back because Pulse is a fantastic operator on this point. In fact, the swap is going to be the mirror to the castle. What is the strategy here? I'm curious where those are going to go. Pretend, you know, you always kind of think, well, what are they going to use? Well, how are they going to stem the flow of what Adventure Force are doing? Because so far, Adventure Force's Defense push has been pretty multifaceted. The big thing I always love about Space Station is they always stay ahead of the curve. Like, if they see themselves losing, they don't just try and do the same thing. They'll just, they have like a million and one strategies ready, and they'll just change it up instantly. Like, and, and even when they're winning, they'll change it up. I remember during the major calls when they were winning against uh, Reciprocity, 
on border, they were constantly changing you up. Even though they were dominating that matchup, they were not allowing reciprocity to adapt to them. And this is the this is the big thing that sets aside great teams from good teams. Is the ability to constantly adapt and change your setups. And we see this very heavy um, like staff open area hold, and this is why we brought the castle. Well, who is going to play in that blue service? There's probably Bosco, if you were to think about how it's generally been working so far. In fact, he's still doing a little bit of point architecture down inside CCTV itself and allowing themselves a bit of a tighter rotate as they swing their way back round. There's a bit of pace by the looks of it, and there it is, Suzaku oh, getting oh. the double kill as he pushed hard in via server. Good at Claymore off the rotate back down from server stairs, and now he's already in point, and he just runs into the gunfire of the Maestro, who locks it down. Fultz, who's already been quite monumental in holding on, and SSG have been able to swing themselves back towards the point. However, the rest of Adventure Force are steadily now catching up to the man of a, well, a thousand sprints, who's Naruto run all the way through most of this point so far. They're lying down behind the bomb chassis, whether they intended to be or a little bit caught unawares. Either way, Zest is in a position to start cracking open this wall as the bullet holes are what's going to try and keep a little bit of control here. Yeah, bullet holes are going to be able to peek it out. And Fultz also has this insanely long angle coming out all the way from the garage to be able to shut all of this down. But SSG already losing their smoke. Their plant denial options are very limited right now because they only have one nitro cell available. We do see a lot of control here over for Adventure Force. We also see the mend advantage in their way thanks to that great play coming out from Suzaku. Not looking good for SSG, but they still have time on their side. But Breezy will start to plant the diffuser down, and Nitro will go out, but he got baited. And that's the only Nitro for SSG. This is not good at all. Fultz, however, is going to push up. He takes Breezy off the board. This might be better. This might be still good for SSG because now they've evened up the man count. The only issue is they have absolutely no plant now, but do Adventure Force know that? Well, Cryo doesn't care right now as he drops Thinking Nade and finds himself with a man advantage. Yes, Fultz. Still being the beacon of light for SSG, finds throw, brings it back to a two versus two. Nomad and Thermite in a position to try and get the diffuser down, but the spots are coming in consistently, and Canadian is trying to double down on the information with some bullets. Oh. There is a swing oh. round, and they get them, but they go down. In the meantime, Maestro's down, and we're in a one versus one. Canadian finds himself rotating around, but the plant has to go down. However, with 50 seconds on the board, Zest has so much time. The worry at this point is those consistent pings. He knows he can't be active on the A point because as soon as he is, and as soon as Valkyrie knows where he is, it could be over. Creeps his way through onto the B point and trying to find the Valkyrie who's otherwise rotated around Gold Vault in a very stealthy move. And if this goes uncaught and unaware, Thermite could be in a very, very tight spot. He seems to have some awareness and he has all the awareness as he flashes it out. And here goes the plant. Canadian hears it, pushes up aggressively and pre fires. Zest drops the plant with 15 seconds. All that time has gone now, and he's going to have to try and find the firefight. And Canadian is playing this brilliantly, running for safety, running to get away from it, and letting and forcing Thermite to be in a position where he has to be in a post plant. The timing is going to cross over slightly. It gives him a little bit of an advantage, but. Thermite is in a very, very good place now. Valkyrie has a huge amount to do as the guns of Thermite can hold an angle. He has a bit of safety and he swings and he finds it. Brilliantly played by Zest. Oh my God. That was that was an insanely intense 1v1 there. I really thought that Adventure Force had completely thrown that round by forcing uh, like a really aggressive execute. And I think you know, that, that, that that's the right thing to do if you're running out of time and you think your opponent has a lot of plant denial and they're going to play it aggressively when they do you have to try and force gunfights and but the thing is is like ssg had no real plant denial all they had was faults who was trying to play aggressive on that garage angle maybe maybe they wanted to shut him down and that's why they tried to push all the way in which you know i guess you know that's also a good play as well ultimately it did work for adventure force though and you can't argue with the results i suppose zest Clutching it out against Canadian in a 1v1. And, you know, that brings Adventure Force up onto the dial. I mean, they are kind of at that content point. At a two attack wins, that's exactly what they needed to do. We are going to go out to a CEO defense, however, for Space Station. We'll have a look at exactly how this is going to be played out. With a bit of a different lineup here coming out, because they brought the Clash rather than the Rook. It was a sick pick Clash as well. Mm. So obviously they're trying to bait out a strategy and not towards well, 
I guess playing a slightly different one. I'm curious, obviously, as you always are when you see a clash on the board, is where is she going to be? Because there's only really a few particular places on the top floor you can throw her where she's going to be comfortable and have the option to pull back. Especially when we look at the last time Canadian was on this point and he was playing very aggressively. He was there roam. He was underneath, deep, deep underneath, and he was eating as much time and unfortunately he ate a few bullets for his troubles as well. It's interesting, again, as well, like, SSG dropped the mirror last round, and they've also dropped the mirror this round. Very rare to see a mirror being brought on bank. Even rarer to see it be available and not be brought at all. So, well, have a look at what Space Station wanted to do here with this clash, and I feel like it's mostly for that aggressive intel coming up and just trying to threaten how whatever is going on on that uh, square stairs take, which Adventure Force did last time. It was actually going all right for them initially, honestly. There is impact trick availability here as well, of course, both from Thinking Nade and Bosco. And again, Fultz not really bringing across those impact nades for himself. Well, Suzaku is not as quick, but they don't really need him for that right now. As integral as those kills were last round, they want to find this 3-3 split, and they weren't that far away last time they pushed this top floor. So go back to the plans it was. They have cover on that run against the window, as it was a big, big factor in when things started to fall apart the last time round, and we saw what was the start of an amazing 3K for the side of Fultz. They've locked down the places where we saw the vigil before. They're being much more controlled, and this is a very good response from Adventure Force. Yeah, we've got Breezy just kind of outside the front door inside of ATMs, and you should be able to shut down all of that going through. Zest successfully will get the wall open, however, no impact tricking will come out today. His throw holding that very, very tight angle to see what he can do just on this repel along with Suzaku. And see exactly what is going to be happening here. Thinking Nade playing very aggressively then. Yet yeah, Suzaku will punish him for it. Thinking Nade will go down. And the opening frag goes to Suzaku. Yet again as well. Suzaku's been doing great on the entry so far. He really lit up the first play there as well. He just has so many electric moments where he kind of pulled the team into this aggression. And he's almost fearless to a degree. But Rampy in the meantime takes out Cryo, who obviously can actually play in the previous ones. This is the first time that we've seen him in this OGA tournament. And now it's just here is what they wanted the clash for. Push back against the top of the square. Make them uncomfortable in holding the back of it and make sure that this skylight doesn't become easy ground because you have to now deal with this clash. You can't leave her to feed all of your information back and there's the duel up, but Canadian has himself placed perfectly on the corner to as soon as he gets stunned, he can just rotate a little bit further back into Janitor's and he shrugs it off. This is looking really good so far for Space Station. They still have this aggressive control onto that square side. Suzaku, however, will strike back. Fultz will go down. And this is looking terrible all of a sudden as they've lost control of the site. Plant will start to go down. Bosco trying to play aggressively to try and shut this down. Canadian on the flank as well as Rampy to try and move in. Rampy finds one of the breezy. Canadian tries to go for the bikini body. Slam around, but won't manage to find the kill just yet. There we go, Bosco take out Suzaku on the repel. And Bosco moves all the way in, but no! The timing will shut him down. Throw will get the kill onto him as Rampy picks up the triple kill onto Zest. It's all down to Throw to try and bring this in. He has no kind of Zofia stuns remaining, but just have impact still to try and give him a little bit more impact room here to try and maneuver around. He's got to expect the person to come through from behind. It's got to be Rampy who is on the counter defuse right now. They don't have the sight line. He does have an impact remaining, but Rampy, he's just going to defuse. And throw is nowhere to be seen. Space Station will take round number six, and they've evened it up into 4-2. <laughs> oh, wow. Did they have a drone in square, and he was waiting for the counter defuse sound? I, potentially. There's always the things about sound and siege and when it works and when it doesn't and i guess it's one of those things that we'll only find out later uh, uh when we get when we get to see their opinions on the game on the twitters and any potential clips they might have but for now a 4-2 split leading into their defense it's a nice place to be in for adventure force they have a bit of a berth they have a bit of you know space that they can work with potentially for off points and potentially for when things don't quite come together and it's down now to ssg to really try and find their ground against this because you know in the previous uh maps on the very first game set that adventure force did which was three maps against akatsuki out of bringing themselves to it across all the rounds. Only three attack rounds across all Defenders three maps was what they took. Everything was on defense. So they've already almost 
had a better attack set up against SSG today. Yeah, I think they've done done, done very well for them. And honestly, like you can come away with a full team, you can just be like, okay, that's the half. Let's move on. We're not wounded, we've not lost. It's kind of just even. Reinforcing the wall. So, we'll see exactly how Adventure Force wants to bring this in. As we'll go downstairs defense, but it's gonna be throw on the dock, interestingly enough. Yeah, I mean obviously you you think about where those angles are gonna be. Zest we saw on the first play day be exceptional with an ACOG. He was consistently on a dock or you know, he was finding himself in these positions in these firefights and he uh, kept on putting bodies in and I guess we're gonna see if obviously throw can kind of bring that mantle towards the team dynamic because it's kind of weird to see how this team works, obviously, but last time I think Zest was a last minute stand in, and now uh, for Cryo, and now Cryo's the stand in for someone else, and the team juggling has kind of come together towards the end of the season. And you know, I guess we'll see if this dock can kind of work the magic that some docks have on this map. Joining us. Unfortunately, Euphoria is not joining us right now, and he's been subbed in by Cryogen. So. We'll see though the drones are going to be coming out from Space Station. They start their attack, but they're going to quickly pincer out and see exactly Suzaku and what he's doing on the roam in conference. Hopefully that's a quick pinch for Space Station. And there we go. Yes, Fultz is going to be able to take him down instantly. Suzaku's roam will be unsuccessful. Completely, really. Yeah, it's a shame how quickly they kind of shut him down there. And I think he's going to be a little bit less cavalier about his roaming that time because again you got to realize that ssg are a very tight team they're very good at responding very good at droning stuff out and it's something that we saw in their first play day they were consistently able to just drone their way through a map find all the bodies and then shut them down one after the other it's a very early smoke to try and stop this maverick from opening everything up as bosco will start to open up all the sight lines that he can just a very small sight line so they can see onto the door into server they don't need to be able to open up that hatch at all. Thatchers are going to go down to the... There we go, they can open up onto the server hatch. That was weird, but there we go, it has to be opened up. And what you do see, it's going to be Breezy holding just below, but he's been thrown down, they're going to know exactly where he is. We're playing that very aggressively, thinking Nade is going to try and take him off the board. Still a drone in here, and they're going to know that Breezy did not retreat out. He's completely trapped in there right now. It's not a nice place to be trapped in as the pings are coming out. They're well aware of what you're going to do there, Smoke. And you've opted to use your last Smoke canister to try and stem the push from the stairs. But as we see him suffer a fair amount of damage and the drop downs are still being cracked, Doc has gone on an urgent rescue mission. Oh, no, he's backed out. He's not going to try and throw his life away. And that's fair enough because Canadian very quickly takes care of Breezy and now it is down to a couple of C4s mm -hmm. and a whole lot of dreams to keep this final 40 seconds in the favor of Adventure Force. Just one C4 coming out from Zest, it looks like his cryogen's already used his C4. It's not looking good at all. 30 seconds left to go, they have no plant denial other than the C4 coming out from Zest. Cryogen, however, is going to be able to pulse it all out and see exactly what is going to be going down. Zest going to go for a very early C4 there. It's going to get shot out though. Oh, what a disaster. And the plant is going to start to go down. So he's going to be very happy with all of this right now. Zest does peek out. He takes out Bosco, but Fultz will find Cryogen and there'll be no more for Adventure Forces. They just get completely wiped out. Space Station will take round number seven with a quick plank from Rampy at the end. Well, 5-2, and it was a pretty concise close down there from Space Station as they managed to find every single angle they needed. Well, and then they made it work, which is probably the more important aspect. They were very good at isolating the positions of Adventure Force and then, well, being able to exploit them and Zaku and then the body of Breezy inside the servers. In the meantime, Faults on 11-3, to three, not far behind. Rampy on 9-3 to three, just kind of shows how well they can keep finding body after body after body. They are having very good fragging matches so far. And we're going to opt to go back down to the lockers. Curious to see what changes on the side of Adventure Force. That round was just clinical by Space Station. That is exactly how you do a bank attack against a heavy roaming team. And it's just gone terribly for Adventure Force right now. Suzaku is going to bring the mirror across, however. As we go to a locker CCTV room, I'm not sure about not bringing a Jaeger here. Although you could argue that Space Station haven't been bringing nades. They haven't been doing anything kind of like that at all. And could argue it, it, it's fine not to bring a Jaeger in this case. Yeah, I mean, we haven't really seen anything 
massively that needs a Jaeger, but what we have seen is that if there was anything that SSG kind of leave themselves too late on, it's generally their actual final execute. There was only about 25 seconds in, and at that point, obviously, Adventure Force, they'd fallen down to having only one C4 that couldn't quite mit hit the mark, but now they've got three on the board to start with. They've added an extra one. They've also obviously still got Breezy on the smokes, and they're opting to play a more passive game, assuming now that they have the mirror on the board as well. But I guess it's down to where Suzaku is going to position himself. It's a weird way of getting everything out right now. Um, this, uh, the camera that he's trying to do, I don't think that works anymore. Like the FaZe Clan camera that was in the last Pro League Finals where you put it in like the little edge. I think you can still put it there, but it's just easily shot out. You can't like glitch it or anything anymore. So Suzaku's actually brought a suppressor on his vector, which you don't see every day. He also brought a suppressor in his air full scene. He likes to be stealthy. I guess so. He's been, <laughs> been playing a lot of sneaking games recently, and now he's going to try and bring this into Siege. Well, here's the drone work. As we said, SSG's closed down on these top floors and usually has been pretty exceptional. Everything is, as we said, it, it's weighed. They know how to find people and they know how to root them out, which is usually the more important step. But in response to that adventure force, they're saying, well, we're going to play down in the basement. Come and find us. Come and get us. We're going to hold our angles, hold our utility, and we're going to meet you on the fight for the point push itself. And it could work out more successful because, you know, you... As well as it says, you play against the team's weaknesses, sometimes you have to not play into their strengths. And in a way, the way the SSG closed down, it's just kind of feeding them bodies sometimes. Yeah, it definitely is. Drones are going to go out in heavy amounts here for Space Station. That's exactly how they want to do this. But it looks like, you know, the same standard attack that's come out from them. They brought the same lineup yet again coming out from them. And, well, this time Adventure Force has learned their lesson about doing aggressive roaming and space stations droning. Yeah, and that's the thing. So we're on a minute 25 now. They've finally well, we'll started to open and Maverick is. through these drop downs. If you compare the pace that Adventure Force would use to get this open, they'd already be putting what a pressure on point. Claymore? What is that claymore? What? Yeah, it was a bit of a curious claymore there, but I guess we'll see obviously how it comes now as push comes to shove because at this point last time we had already lost a couple of players of space station the mirror window there is gonna crack that open not 100 percent sure what the idea of that was maybe to think hey they might be behind it but if anyone holds that behind it well you're insane and now bosco is gonna slowly crack that open with 50 seconds on and all the plants in our utility but all the utility generally in the hands of ssg as well this is going to turn into quite an explosive final 40 seconds. Great smoke from Fultz as well to cut off that angle all the way from Garage from Cryogen. He's going to be able to pick up that at all as this is not looking good for Adventure Force. They don't have their plant denial in proper position right now as Canadian should be able to move it in and go for a plant. But there we go. That plant denial will start to come through from Breezy as he throws out his first smoke. And you're right. This is a very, very late execute from Space Station right now. They've only got 20 seconds left to go on the clock. And there is still so much utility up still. Nitro is going to go out, but he won't hit his mark just yet. As we... What? Oh my god, Rampy's managed to drop down the side into Vault. He takes one, he takes two off the board, and that's going to be quick trades coming out from Adventure Force, but they've lost a lot of control right now, and they don't have any plant denial up, but no, the plant is not going to go down from Space Station at all, as Adventure Force is going to take round number eight. You know, for a second there, like because we didn't even see Rampy and what he was doing, I thought <laughs> that somehow the pulse got shot through the gold wall, but... <laughs> You look so weird, but there we go. It is going to be... I thought that was going to be so successful from Space Station. Like, what a great flank by Rampy. I, I didn't even see that come through at all. Well, that was it. As I said, you've got to look at those Hail Mary moments. If a team, if the way they set up, even when everything is going right, the push still comes to that final 20 seconds, it takes so much less to be able to completely destroy the cart. It takes one quarterback one throw, one moment to make it happen with the C4 as we saw, or a bullet or whatever, but it just makes your balance so much better. And if you can keep being able to pull that final trick against a team in that situation, it doesn't matter how shaky things start to get, because if you've still got one body alive, you turn it into a one versus one, because they just don't have the time to finish the job. Well, it was a great attempt from Rampy, but it won't matter anyway, as Adventure Force will find their first defense downstairs and will actually not opt to go to CEO, they'll go to Tellers instead. Oh dear. Ah. Cryo is building up momentum. 
Um, but unfortunately, we're going to have to call for a rehost there. On the five, three split is the position that we are on. Five seconds to so we may be playing till the end of the round, unfortunately. Um, is it, is it? Oh, okay, cool. So we'll play through on the round, unfortunately. So it's a 5-3 split as Cryo is going to have to quickly get himself reset and get himself back in action. There is the removal from Battle Life, finally catching the fact that he's been running on a slippy four for a very, very long period of time. And well, let's see what Adventure Force can do with one body down because they find themselves in a bit of a tighter situation now. However, it's one of those situations where sometimes if you're a man down, you play a bit harder, you play a bit faster, and you play a bit more, well, like your lives depend on it. This is not looking good at all for Adventure Force already. Losing one man off the board. Space Station will begin their round number nine attack with a fairly similar lineup to what they've been bringing so far, although they will be bringing the IQ from Thinking Nade, and this time the Rampy Sledge will make an appearance as well. We'll see exactly how this is going to go down. Suzaku playing very carefully here. It looks like he's going to go for a run out right now. Might be able to catch Canadian off the board, and he will! That's Diffuser down, but more importantly, that is the Thermite Dad dead so early on. Oh my god. How does the, how do SSG let that happen? As I said, you, you push a team like that against the wall, you put them into the pressure situation, they're going to make diamonds. And they're going to make them by aggressively running out and killing Canadian. Well, that is Zaku back in and still trying to fly the flag of Adventure Force and fly it very well. But now it's a moment of seeing if they can keep this swing, keep this momentum, and how much of SSG's strategies relied on having the Thermite still standing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're steadily clearing now across the top here, and they find their way towards the CEO console side with Rampy pre-firing out the man that's caught in a little bit of a corner, and Breezy. Well, it's not that easy as he suffers fate, and now they're clear to start clearing through the point itself. Rampy has found himself inside and finds throw with Suzaku finding Bosco and Nade finding Suzaku. Suddenly, it's just Zest to try and find some way, but he gives his position away to the man holding on the close side of the corner. And now it's, well, another reveal of the information and a post-plant situation. Prefires will be coming down from Zest, trying to do what he can right now, but think he need just about 50 HP, but it's going to be an uphill battle for Zest. He does have a Nitro Cell in his back pocket, but can't really find a way to do what he can with it. Diffuser is going to slowly do its work as well. Continues to go for those Prefires, but not able to find the kill just yet. Prone angles can be coming out from SSG, but they're just going to let Zest play it the way that he wants to play. He's going to do a bit of a dance to try and game himself a bit of momentum, but no, he'll get taken down. A space station will take the round. Cryogen's not quite reconnected yet. Looks like we're going to have a rehost. Well, if there's a time to have a bit of a team talk, match point. It's quite a nice time to have it on 6-3. They have a yeah. fair bit of work left to do, unfortunately, but from what they've been able to swing out, some of it's been pretty convincing. Yeah, as we've said, like, Adventure Force need this map. They need this to go to the side of the border. Clubhouse is such a great map for Space Station. I'm not sure if it's going to be a good map for uh, for Adventure Force at all. They need this to go to the border. We saw quite a few cracks in the, the slate here from Space Station when they went to border, so I fully believe that if we get to this decider, maybe not necessarily an Adventure Force win, but it'll be definitely be a closer matchup, but yeah, this bank has been a bit of a rollover from SSG right now. We've definitely seen some good plays coming up for Adventure Force so far. Especially kind of like, it's very aggressive, like Suzaki with a run out as well. Oh, yeah. Taking out Canadian. And like that was that was a big play from him, obviously. It's just unfortunate, I think. I think that Adventure Force definitely have like the right idea about what they want to do. But Space Station have been so clinical about how they've gone about these attacks. Yeah, and the Warriors, obviously, it's... You know, we're in this position now where we're looking down the potential end of a 7-3 and then 4. Adventure Force, you're then looking at Clubhouse. You're looking, as you said, that's a good space station map. That's a space station map where we've already seen them take a team 7-1 this tournament alone. Yeah. I mean, to, to be fair, it is a Theris, and on paper, on paper, Adventure Force is a better team than a Theris is. Because while yeah. Theris is the second best Mexican team, they are not a two tier two team. They are not a challenger league team. Yeah, and it, it's the kind of breakdown of it as well. But the other way to look at this is it's as I said, often second band from the side of Adventure Force. Yeah. They don't have a huge 
history of playing it and they try to avoid it for a lot of intents and purposes in best of one situations, that might mean that it's just one that they prefer not to take other teams to and they're happy to play it. But mm -hmm. historically, you've always got to kind of look at the fact that in best of ones, it's Villa and then it's Clubhouse. That's their standard pairing. Yeah, so yeah, I think Space Station done really, really well with the map bands here. If they feel confident about taking Adventure Force to bank, it seems to be going pretty fine for them. I think the the whole game has, has played out exactly how Space Station wanted to go out. This has been very, very clinical on bank, especially. Um, I think it's not over for Adventure Force. They've definitely seen that they can do stuff here, but they need three more wins on defense, which means they eventually do have to go back to that offside of Tellers. Yeah, and that's the thing is it was a very quick shutdown of Tellers. Obviously, yeah. what was missing in the defense, we might not know for a while whether they completely went, right, well, we've just got to full aggro this. We've got to find them before they even get close to the building and then go from there. I guess we might see if we get the opportunity to swing back around to that point. But at the same time, you know, you've still got to get through a couple of other points. You've still got to get through a couple of other places. And as we've seen, SSG, they're very, very good when they need to be aggressive, when they need to shut down. It's the final throws of a round is where they historically struggle. Yeah, no, it uh, it definitely is. I think that that eventual side had you have a lot of potential here. I think like one of the big rounds for them was one that like kind of basement attack that Space Station had, but we thought like, Rampy with the flank was going to completely win that for them. But let's have a look at how it is going to go down as we do move back into the game. Adventure Force versus Space Station here on Bank. It is match point to Space Station. Wow. CEO is where they're going to opt to swing to instead of returning to server. And I think that's a very fair pick because server was, well, cleanly picked apart by the hands of the Space Station. Now it's a matter of seeing if they can find some more rounds to pull themselves back in. Suzaku bringing the Maestro and baiting it away. And the same with Rampy, who goes from a sledge to an ash. Not the hugest change, but I guess it shows that Rampy might attack with a fair bit of pace. In the meantime, Suzaku is going to swap to the Bandit, give themselves more electronic denial across the side, and, well, I guess they've kind of realized, well, there's no Thatcher on the board, and there's no kind of quick way of getting this open. Maybe I think this is fight. more that Space Station look at this lineup for Adventure Force and say, oh, it's going to be CEO. They can't go basement. If they're bringing a mirror, it has to be CEO. There's no way they're bringing a mirror in Archives, and... And a dog. So, like, yeah, it's it's, it's going to be CEO. And it is indeed going to be there. So I think that the Ash is being brought here as a way, yes, as, as you said, like, to potentially deal with those Maestro cams. But also, they don't need a Sledge for this attack. It's not going to be useful for them to bring a Sledge for this attack. So we'll have a yep. look at exactly what Adventure Force wants to do here. But this the self has been pretty standard from them so far. It looks like mainly just doing those conference mirrors. And we did already see from Space Station how effective those conference mirrors can be. Exactly. And they utilized it to the degree of, well, not only were they finding kind of counter frags and counter motion against it, Cryo going for a very quick aggressive run out there. No bodies, unfortunately, no luck. Um, but they're also using it to feed the information back to be able to get the maestro to get the bodies off the windows. They knew where everyone was and they knew how they were going to take it. And he kind of gave his life and said, they're there. And then he was able to find it because they had to let the flag slip. But from that point onwards, being able to give yourself some solace and solstice on the point, well, they won the round. And that's all you really need in the meantime. Suzaku, still on a roll, still on aggression and still trying to find everybody he physically can. Is going to have a quick look out and see if the camera is still in progress, but can potentially catch the man on the rappel here if he's a bit aggressive. In the meantime, Bosco is going to try and, well, keep an eye and expect it now that he's put some fire in because of that drone. Had it in the back of Garage, watching and waiting. And again, that is the play that leads to moments like that. Two very quick frags for SSG. Yeah, the droning from SSG has really just been absolutely spectacular from them, and they're going to be able to shut down all that heavy aggressive roaming and aggressive plays coming out from Adventure Force. And now they find themselves at a two-man advantage. Make that a three-man advantage as Fultz takes Cryogen off the board. Bulletproof camera will be destroyed by Rampy, and they'll be able to drone out all of this and see exactly what they want to do moving forward. But in a 2v5, things are looking very much SSG here for the final, well, potential final round here on Bank throw just playing around onto the stock hallway and see what he can do here but there's still a decent amount of info here for adventure force as well as a bit of utility in the forms of a nitro cell well with a minute 10 on the board and bodies on the windows now creeping and edging their way closer and closer it's only a moment 
before these drones roll through and the bullets are gonna follow very soon after. Five versus one. Clutch this, or oh, well, not throw the map, you've put in a good fight, but in a post-plant situation and <laughs> the mirror window there watching you, there's only really way that would go. 7-3, we end our jaunt to bank, but it's not over yet. There is a best of three situation, a potential clubhouse, and then maybe a border after that. We will see you after some adverts. Predict the outcome, win the game. Get live coverage and schedules for your favorite tournaments. Analyze, predict, and vote to gain points. Compete with other esports fans and climb the leaderboards. Straight, everything esports. Download now on iOS and Android. 